Hello everybody, it's Heath Robinson here. I'm excited to be hosting again. I know the picture is of Nicole. Um, I changed it for the last couple, but I forgot to change that picture back. So it is not Nicole today, it is Heath and John Barclay. And I am more than excited to be welcoming him back to present it with us. Uh, Johnny there? I am here. Thanks for having me back. Well, thanks for coming again, folks. I'm assuming there's uh, a number of you who are coming back uh, again, and if you are, I appreciate that. If there's new people, welcome. Uh, for those new people here, I feel like I need to always say this. I apologize to those who've been before, but uh, my webinars are my intent, and my style of teaching is to give you information for inspiration, if you will, um, not necessarily to come up with great finished pictures today, but more to give you the concepts of uh, that you can employ into your workflow, potentially. Uh, we'll certainly do our best to make them look good, And but what I do do is I use images that I'm playing with throughout the, the months uh, as I lead up to these webinars, and then I put things away to say, hey, that might be nice to show that that's really how I'm using these things in a workflow. A couple of them today are more for fun, just saying I was playing around with some things uh, on the second image, and I thought I would just say, hey, this is kind of fun and cool. Maybe you'd never use it and post it per se, uh, but others might, and so I wanted to show some fun uh, little tricks as well. So these are the images here that I'm going to be playing with today, uh, but I've got them loaded into Photoshop. So again, thanks to Topaz for having me back, um, and let's get started. The first one, I just can't help but do any webinar, and again, apologize to those who've seen some of these things before, different images. I always do that on purpose to keep you awake um, for those who've been before, but because the audience is vast and it's going to include people who have been before and haven't, I feel like I need to cover certain key things that I find to be essential to my workflow. So here is an image, and again, to answer the question that it always comes up is, you know, do you do all that you can in Lightroom? Absolutely. Lightroom is a great piece of software, and you can do a lot in there. I just find some of the tools that Topaz has helps me get to another step in my process, or in this case, finish it. So here I have a, a Palouse picture, rolling cloud shadows, which I love out there. The sky looks good, and for all intent and purposes, it looks pretty good. However, if we go, as I do on 95% of what I have to do anymore nowadays, I don't use clarity, uh, or I shouldn't say I don't. I don't always use clarity in um, in Lightroom, I'll go into the Clarity tool from, from Topaz. And why do I do that? And let me hit the reset button. It's the sticky, so it's remembering what I did the last time, and it will for you as well. Um, but what I love about this program is it has four sliders for Clarity rather than the one slider that you get in Clarity from within Lightroom or in Photoshop. And it allows me a lot more control over the what Clarity is doing. And essentially, Clarity is local contrast. That's what it is. It's not like a contrast slider that you might have in another piece of software, including um, Photoshop and so forth. This really is much more gentle than that. And I'll do a little comparison later on another image, hopefully give you a little more information about that. If you're new to Clarity, it would be okay, and I'm not going to take the time here, but to roll over these and let's say for this, hit the landscape, let it build all the previews, and then scroll over those previews, and then watch what's happening to the sliders on the right side. That's how you learn what presets seem to work well. And then you can build your own, and I have built really two over here under my presets. And so John, start. Let's see what that's going to do, and let's go before. Click anywhere in the image, it'll allow you to see before, let go, and there's after. Pretty dramatic, and so here, and this is what happens all the time with clarity and why I like it so much. I think I have it looking just like I want it to be in Lightroom, but when I go and throw it through clarity, I realize it was a little flat looking. It, even though I had a good black point and a white point set, clarity gives me that pop. It like jumps off the screen, it gives me a little added clarity into the clouds and the sky in this case, and, and the land uh, as well. And so it, it just does a nice job of making it pop, if you will. It's a little more than I want with that particular start, so I've created a medium as well. Let me hit that again. And that will make it not quite so overdone and affected looking. 
again, before, I think it looked pretty good. Afterwards, boy, if I look in the in the cloud shadow area specifically, man, that's doing a great job of of making that pop. Now, there's a little more that we want to talk about here, and that is that we should always take a look at the histogram and anything we're doing. That's your best friend. And we want to see if, in fact, that move, because anytime we do clarity, which is a contrast move, we are building up contrast and we're shifting the histogram, um, expanding it most of the times on both sides. And sometimes that means we're going to clip the whites or we're going to block up the shadows. In this case, we have not. But if we did, and we'll show it on another image, they've built in for you this tone section of black mid-tones and whites let's say this white was a little blown out, you would come to the white slider and pull it to the left so that it would pull that mountain of data to the left, which it just did a little bit, and that would recover any of those blown out highlights that happened because of that move. That's a, that's a big deal, that's a real advantage. And then we also have hidden underneath here in the other panel, notice there's a, there's a panel called Clarity where we have these four different sliders, and that's a shape that I tend to like, and that's what my preset is giving me, is something like about 25 on the, the first one, 14, and then minus 5, minus 22 tends to be a shape that I like for landscape type photography. And then I can tweak it from there. Uh, and then again, use those tone sliders to recover anything you're blowing out or blocking up on the shadows. And then, should you want to, you can do some color adjustments here. So let's let's go to the saturation tab and let's see if we can add a little bit more saturation to the green and make it look what my memory is and that's nice. And then maybe even a little more yellow in those hills. That's probably a little much. I mean that that looks fun, but it's probably not real. I'll rein that back a little bit to make it look more natural. Now in addition to all of this, you have a mask for the clarity section right here, or you have a mask for the um, hue saturation luminosity, luminosity section. So that means if in fact this, this was happening in this area and you didn't want that saturation to happen over here, you could go get the uh, roll open the mask section here, I would always use edge aware, it's great. There are reasons to use other ones, but in this case edge aware. And then we want to hide that, and I could come over here and I could paint in this area with my brush, and that would eliminate, notice the mask up on the top right here has now got black, which is concealing. The white in this mask is revealing that adjustment. I wouldn't do that in this image, obviously. I'd leave it there. Uh, I just want you to be aware that that capability exists. So I'm going to paint that back in. Uh, and make sure that it's there in the image. So you have masking capability to, to make those adjustments appear where you want them or remove them where you want them. Uh, and then in this case, I wouldn't touch the sky, but oft times the, the blue might be a little faded if you did not use a polarizer. In that case, you might come in here and you might come to the luminosity section and start bringing down the blue and really darkening up that blue sky. Notice it, it looks ridiculous right now. It's way overdone. Again, like I said in the beginning, I'm just trying to give you ideas of how to use these pieces of software in your own workflow. I do this all the time. I take a look at what's going on. You know, again, can you do these luminosity saturation moves within Lightroom? Absolutely you can. But if you're going to kick this out to Clarity to use the Clarity, which I highly recommend you do, just be aware that it's tucked right in here equally as effective, maybe a little bit more control, honestly, because you have the masking capability right here. So that's all I really want to cover on this. I'll leave this and hit OK. Um, and then just for fun, I'm going to make a layer of that. OK, why didn't that make a layer? It should have. Let's try that again. There we go. And you know, because it's new and refreshed recently, let's just show you what another potential right answer might be, another choice, if you will. You could come into the really fun box of crayons, as I like to say, uh, called Topaz Impression, and they've got now the have updated this rather to the new version two, so it's faster in most cases. Uh, I think there's 30, I can't remember, 35 more new um, preset looks over here on the right side, um, and and they've added, you know, the, the whole panel's a little different, there's a, there's a um, 
a blending tool for the opacity and so forth, and they've made it look like texture effects, which we'll review here on another image as well. So you can go searching for some things if you want to, or you can look at categories, so it's very similar to that. Um, so, you know, you could come in here and you can come into the painting section and uh, there's George O'Keefe and Monet and all these things, but, you know, let's just to pick an easy one like oil painting and we'll go into a little more of the details in another image, but you could do this and then come down to this opacity slider on the bottom right is where I am. And what you're essentially doing is blending. If I pull this down to zero, it's really the, the, the background image that you brought in there, right? And then I can blend in a little bit of that painterly look maybe to that level so that you're not, in my mind, philosophically, you don't want people to look at your work and go, oh, my gosh, great job with, you know, Topaz impression. No, you want them to go, wow, that's really cool. It almost looks painterly. How did you do that? And then you can express explain to them that, well, you know, I used Topaz Impression and I just used a slight opacity of it, you know, because I didn't want it to look uh, so overdone, if you will. But uh, if you want to, you can even go further than that, is let's leave this at 100% and let's hit OK. And if you're a Photoshop user and you made a layer like I did, you could do that same opacity slider right here in Photoshop. So background layer, layer right here, and then this opacity slider here allows me to do that same thing that I was doing from within the piece of software. So for you Lightroom users, it, it would be common not to, to use it here, obviously. You would be using it right within Topaz Impression, but for you Photoshop users, you might want to put it here, throw in a quick layer mask like this, and then get a brush out, and then maybe paint where you want that to be or not to be. Uh, I'm going to paint with black here, and I'm going to remove that painterly look here, and just leave the painterly look in the sky. I realize it went, went pretty quickly there. This is We're not going to talk about layers and layer masks in detail. If you need to know more about that, there are many videos out there, including on my website of, of of how to do layers and masks, and mine is for free, by the way. So there you go. You, you can leave it the same, or you can use this crazy box of crayons called Impression uh, 2 and make the sky or the land or whatever you want to look a little painterly. All right. Let's move to South Africa. I don't, it just this makes my heart sing, and that's something I like to talk about and teach in my uh, workshops. Uh, we ought to be making images that make our heart sing. That's the reason I do it. Right? It feeds my soul. It makes my heart sing when I go to places like South Africa where I took this. This is an old film scan, and I just did an interview for a great website recently that'll come out in a couple of months, hopefully, and he asked me to send a whole bunch of images to go along with the stories I was talking about, and I spent a lot of time talking about this amazing, life-transforming trip to South Africa that I did, and this picture is one that I sent to him, and it just has a lot of meaning for me because of the connection to Freeman Patterson, who I went on this workshop with, and I was just playing one day with uh, Impression, and I just wanted to show you, I mean, again, would I ever really do this? Well, yeah, I did it, <laughs> you know, but what I do it, you know, on a daily basis and, and run out and use this piece of software, probably not. But so, so here I am in uh, impression again, it's building all of the, the previews for me. And so you can, again, go through all of these previews <coughs> uh, or you can do a search, you know, if you can't remember and, and you, you, you knew it was uh, O'Keefe, you know, O-K-E-E-F, right? Is that how it is? Georgia? Oh. Helps to be able to spell right. G U R G I A. Is that how you spell Georgia? There she is. And it's, oh, I missed the apostrophe. Never mind. Okay, but I, I was clicking through these and I saw this Georgia O'Keeffe. And come on, seriously, isn't that a whole lot of fun? And then just to just to work you through what uh, you can do with this great piece of software is if. If you see a preset that you like, it doesn't mean you have to accept it as it is. Anytime you see these sliders show up, click on them. And now you can click on a different brush stroke, and that's going to give a slightly different feel. Any, all these different brush strokes will make it feel different. You can change the number of strokes, which is going to affect the way it looks, the painting volume. You, know, you have a lot of control uh, over this, including control over light and texture and, and so forth. You know, if I want to make this not as bright as what the preset says and darken that down, which I think I would, I would do that. And once again, come down to the opacity slider 
and blend it in, which I think is a lot nicer. So about 50%, 60%. Now the before looks like that, the natural scan of the slide, and now it brings out all that color, and you've created a faux painting. You know, if you want it to be a little less, bring it down to be a little less. But you have a whole lot of control over the amount of paint, the opacity of the paint, the brush strokes, str uh, uh, the length of the brush strokes, the strength of the paint, all these things that you could play. With. Again, it, like I say, it's a box of crayons in this and also texture effects that we'll talk about. So have fun with this piece of software, uh, and there are a lot of people who do like the painterly look and do it a whole lot better than I do. Maybe that's why I don't do it as much, uh, although I, I must confess I use it a lot in fall foliage pictures. Um, but I'm sure somebody who is much more uh, conversant in this type of language would be able to do a lot better job with this type of scene than I can. But hopefully that inspires you to, to think about other ways to use that piece of software. This is one that I've had in the background waiting to use, excuse me, um, and I seem to never get to it, at least I don't think I did, and that's the problem. I, I said to Heath, I, I needed the last webinar to be posted as an archive so I can see what the heck I did because I can't remember which images I didn't get to. But I'm going to hope that I didn't and, and introduce you now on this image, which was out at the hideout in January in Wyoming. What a blast that was. Great place to photograph. Can't wait to go again. We'll be doing that one again. And let's go into texture effects. And just to introduce again those who are new and even those who have been playing with it, uh, it always helps, uh, at least I'm told, and I would agree because it helps me as well, to, to refresh your memory on some of these things of, of how I'm using it. So just a quick introductory to the, to the um, interview, uh, interview, to the interface. Uh, Again, this looks a lot like impression, right? This was the first interface that looked like this, and now they're making them all, and I think it works well. So when you see featured here on the top right, you can see the different categories that are being uh, of earthy and ethereal and grunge. Or you can come to these three dots and look at tags, which is going to look at things like landscape. And if you click on that, all of the previews here are going to be more landscape. And again, you can search for something should you want to. And there was one that I found when I was playing with this a couple of months ago, actually. Well, probably three months ago. Old Time, I think it's called. Well, obviously, it's not called Old Time. I could have sworn it was called Old Time. Let's see what Old does. Old School, maybe it was. Okay. So it's called Old School. Um, yeah, whoops, let me go back here because I want to work through this properly. So at this point, um, you know, it brings up anything when I search that has the word old in it. In this case, it's old school. And uh, once again, I have sliders just like in impressions. So if I see those sliders, that's going to tell me what I can um, adjust. Now let's slow down just a little bit because this is where the fun starts. At this point, remember, we're looking at a preset. In general, I like it, but I don't like it 100%. It's a little overdone for my taste, and we're obscuring the faces, but the tonality I love of it, and I see the potential to make this work. So here are the different layers that somebody back at Topaz used to create this particular styled look. What I always do is I click every one of these off, just click off the eyeball, and now we're back to the original picture that I am, have imported into the software. So here's what the basic adjustment did. Made it black and white, essentially. Here's what the texture did. Here's what the borders did. Added a little border to the edge. They added some split toning to change the color. They added some color overlay to, to uh, further change the color. And then some dust and scratches. Well, as we went through those, not a big fan of that particular texture. So I'm going to turn that off. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go up to that texture layer and hit the trash can and throw it away because <laughs> I really don't need it or like it. In all honesty, I'm not a big fan of dust and scratches. I'm going to remove that as well. And look, I'm left with a cool old-time photograph that totally fits the mood of this scene that was just so much fun to stage and set up of uh, these folks out at the hideout. So what does a, just to dig a little deeper here and drill down a little bit more, on any of these, if you want to then further fine-tune, you could, for instance, open the color lay, overlay 
and just click on the color box here and that's going to bring a color picker up. Now at this point, I can move that anywhere I want and essentially tone this image any way I want. Okay, so you have the box of crayons and can pick the color that you want and then you just hit OK. In the borders, you can open up the borders and say, you know, I'd rather have no border or I want this border. Just scrolling over them, you're going to see what they do. So a whole lot of capability to add borders if you want to do that. And then the basic adjustment is just that. It's, you know, you can change the brightness, you can change the, how the, it's, think of this as like a shadow slider from within Lighter, but it's going to open up the shadows. By the way, these, they've worked really hard at Topaz to make the brightness, shadow, and highlight very independent and not cross over into each other's territory, if you will. Brightness is really going to handle just the brightness of, think about it more in the midtones, whereas the highlight is really just going to affect that really bright, bright areas and make that snow and the horses get a lot brighter. Uh, the clarity in this case is one slider and it's, it's going to do what you think it's going to do. It's grunge it up or, should you want to, bring it to the negative side and smooth that out a little bit. So. You have a lot of capability here. We're going to do one more picture in this piece of software, so I'm going to bump out of this and move on because time always goes way too fast, although we're doing good today. We're getting through a bunch of these. So let's finish with a little bit of party fun here. And this is a new – oh, by the way, let's just stop for a second. This is a – I'm a cyclist, and I was cycling a lot, and I kept uh, cycling by this um, – this patch, I guess these are black-eyed Susans. I'm terrible at knowing the names of flowers. It's a pretty yellow flower, how's that? But I'm pretty sure it's black-eyed Susan. And I, it was a great little scene, and so one day I waited, and, and I brought my Lens Baby Velvet 56. And if you're not familiar with the Lens Baby Velvet 56, it's awesome. It's a really cool lens. Creates this dreamy glow look. Look at the edges of the leaves. That's because of the Velvet 56. Uh, it's also a great. It's also it works as a really true macro lens, and it works as a great portrait lens. It, you don't have to have this dreamy glow, but I tell you what, at f 2.8, it works really great. Um, email me privately for lens baby stuff after this, and I can uh, set you up with a discount code. But anyways, I'm a huge fan of lens baby stuff, so I went out, we had this in mind, took the image, and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with this when I got home. I pre-visualized, for sure, in this case, texture effects, because I must not lie, I must tell the truth, what my mother said all the time, but um, it, I cannot stop playing with texture effects. It's an absolute blast. Um, so let's just get you back to the normal screen here. Okay, here's where we were before, and you have all these wonderful presets that you can you know, play around with, uh, which we just touched base on, and I think that's good enough for the presets, but I want to help you see the other power, which is the way I prefer to use the program, and that is to go up in the top right corner here and choose New. So New, notice there's nothing there, and all you see is my original photograph. Well, in my mind, I have a friend, Kathleen Clemens, and she is an extraordinary lens baby, lens baby um, artist, and I use that term very purposefully. She is masterful in her flower photography. It's some of the best you'll ever see. Well, she created, thankfully for us, uh, some uh, textures that she loves, and you can buy those textures from Kathleen, Kathleen Clemens, C-L-E-M-M-O-N-S, and you can load those in like I have, and so let's just show you how to do that really quickly. Let's go here and get them. They're called Clemens Textures. I think there's, yeah, hopefully it's just 1M. I might have had that wrong. Uh, if you want to buy them from Kathleen or fly paper or whatever you want to buy or make your own and you want to add those in, just bring open the texture. So let me let me go back because I always seem to go a little too fast. So you're going to hit this add adjustment here, the plus sign and the add adjustment. These are the various adjustments that you can use to create a look all on your own. It's the same ones that were in any of those presets. I'm going to go down and add a texture layer. In this case, I just want to have open Kathleen's that I've been downloaded, but I want to show you how to do that. This little piece of paper with a folded tab with an arrow on it, if I click on that, it gives me my import dialog box. 
In this case, all I did was I hit the plus sign and I created a new category. Let's do this. We'll call it today Topaz Webinar. And I would hit OK. I've now created a new category called Topaz Webinar right here. See it? On the left side. And at this point, I can hit the import. And now I can go navigate to my downloads and I can go to the um, location of where those downloads are that I purchased from Flypaper or whomever and that's going to put them in and they will show up and look just like this. What's nice too, because they do take up space, is if you have some that you purchased and you know you see two or three in there that you really just know that you're never going to use, they don't float your boat in any way, shape, or form, hit the trash can and, and get rid of them so that you don't have all that space uh, taking or have them taking up space, I should say. So once again, just because re repetition is good, you want to buy some textures or put your own in there, just open a texture layer. Let's go back and do that one more time. A texture layer this way. We hit texture, and then we can hit this down arrow, open up that box, add a... a category that you want and put those textures in there and you're good to go. Okay, let's hit close on this. All right, so let's go here and let's go to Kathleen's textures. Uh, and then let's slow down again a little bit. Here's what makes this program so crazy good. Look at all the capabilities I have. If I don't like the way, and let's just you know, find one we like here. There's all sorts of textures. I mean, I love these things. They're great. Matter of fact, I like this one. <laughs> um, I can flip it horizontally, so I can put the texture in a certain part of the image, if you will. I can flip it vertically. I can change the size of it, so I can make that texture bigger or smaller. I mean, that's a lot of control just in the texture, the position of the texture, and how it looks. Then I can change the opacity of it by using the slider and make it more or less. And then one of the most important parts of this box is the blend mode. And you, if you roll over them, you're going to see what those different blend modes do. I'm going to tell you right now that you're going to use soft light, overlay, and multiply an awful lot, those three. In this case, overlay is going to work really, really well. So we now can add and make that texture more prominent and in your face. I hope you're having the same reaction that I had when I started playing with this image. This is awesome. This I would absolutely use in a heartbeat and I will use and post on a blog post. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring the opacity up there a little bit, not a lot. I don't want it to be in your face, but I definitely love the texture. Um, and then something, a few more things that are really important in the software. When I have a texture box open, and I know that is because it says texture up at the top of this, all of these controls have to do with the texture only, not the background photograph. That's really important to know. So when I see this detail slider, it's going to enhance the texture of the de I'm sorry, the detail of the texture. Kathleen's texture and not the flower. That's pretty cool, right? That's a lot of control to really accentuate a texture should you want to do that. And then here's a cool trick, and I've shown this before, but for the new people, this is great. So let's say your texture has a lot of color. This one doesn't have a lot of color. It has an amber color to it, so it should work. I can remove, and it did, so look, see there's the amber color that's there. Again, remember this slider, the saturation slider, is only affecting the saturation of the texture. So it's not saturating that flower anymore at all. So there is a little amber in there. Well, if I remove that saturation, I'm left with just the texture. That's another, should be another aha, because sometimes you're just going to want to have the texture without the color. But look now, if I want to add a color, I now have the whole spectrum here. So all I did was remove the saturation, but now I move the color strength up a little bit, and now when I use the color slider, I now can add any color I want to my images. That's huge. And again, remember, this is just the texture that I'm adding a certain amount of color. So what that now says to you, in effect, is you don't worry about what color a texture is because you can change, you can remove the saturation from any texture 
and then use the color strength and the color sliders to put in whatever color you want to. That's huge. It's really huge. Um, let me make sure I haven't missed anything here. I'm going to go ahead and remove this to, or move these back. I'm going to bring the natural saturation up a little bit. Oh, yes, I didn't. One more thing. Back to the masking. So at the bottom of the screen, let's say that you, and this is common, let's say that you have put in the texture, but there's certain areas where you just don't want that texture, and that would be common. In this case, they've not named them remove or add or something. They've left them with a typical masking nomenclature, which is black and white. You know, remember, white reveals, black conceals. So at this point, if I don't want the texture to be happening on the um, on the flower, I can remove it. But maybe to make this look a little easier, let's just go back for a second before I do that. And I'm going to add a texture layer. So let, let's, let's um, right now all we have is the texture, I'm not a texture, a diffusion layer. We have a texture layer. If I want to add other uh, effects here to this, all I have to do is hit that plus sign again. And in this case, I'm going to, I'm going to add a diffusion layer to this. Uh, and let's make that so that you can see it here, diffusion. That, that's really kind of diffusing this, uh, but it's diffusing it a little bit. I love what it's doing to the leaves and the edges here. Here, let me turn it off and on here. There, there it's off and on. I love the glow, soft glow that those leaves are getting. I'm not as big of a fan as to what it's doing to the center of the flower, though. And that's on purpose here because I want to show you how I can amass that. So with this diffusion layer, now I can go down, and every layer has its own mask, by the way. I can make sure to hit the black. I can make the brush size bigger or smaller. Okay. And by the way, you, traditionally you can use the bracket keys next to the letter P on your keyboard. But in, in using this program, you have to, the last thing you have to have done is clicked on the brush size slider over here on the right. Once you do that, then the those bracket keys can make it bigger or smaller like I'm doing here. In this case, I want to remove all of that uh, diffusion so you can move this strength up to, to uh, 100. The hardness has to do with how well it's going to detect the edges and how soft the brush is, if you will. So now all I have to do is come in and paint, and you'll see uh, in the mask in the bottom right, the black is the uh, conceal, right? So black conceals in a mask, white reveals in this mask down on the bottom right, and we can see that it's done a great job, and by the way, hands down, the edge wear technology that Topaz has is better than anybody else in the market. There's just no question about it, and, and it's proven yet again here. So I've removed that uh, subtle soft diffusion from this flower by using the mask tool. And you can do that with a brush. You can do a spot mask or none if you want to. But And the spot just means it's going to draw a circle. It's kind of like the radial um, adjust tool in Lightroom. That's what the spot's like. And you can make that spot bigger or smaller. Here, I'll just show it to you really quickly here. Um, whoops, where did it go? Put the center. So there we go. So I hit the center thing and it makes the spot and you can make this and adjust it uh, to be any size you want and then position it there and you could you could have masked in that regard and that circle is where it's going to be masked and then it's going to be a feathered edge going out beyond that and uh, you can ch change the transition of that particular type of a mask here uh, and then you can the color sensitivity is just saying based on color and your level of sensitivity to that color is where it's going to apply apply the mask. Okay? So that's what a spot type of mask does versus a brush type of mask. So before, after using Kathleen's wonderful textures, and once again, if I even if I've worked on this and I've done all that other work and I would come back and I want to say, you know what, I want to look at maybe a different texture, maybe that one, change it. Now I've changed it to a different texture, and then at that point I can add more. I can go back and say, you know what, I want to see what a soft light looks like, uh, blend mode versus a overlay blend mode versus a multiply blend mode, right? So you have all sorts of control. Uh, everything, honestly, that I could ever have wanted. I was begging these guys to make this. I would like to think that some of my suggestions for what they needed to make actually came involved in here. They can humor me and say it did. <laughs> but uh, this is awesome. It's everything I'd hoped for. Hopefully that's got you excited to think about it yourself here. Okay. Uh, all right. Where are we? Oh, yeah. I definitely will get through this. 
we're probably not going to get to the last one, and, and that's okay. Because it's always asked, um, why, you know, what are your favorite tools? Why do you use them? Usually those are the questions at the end. And sometimes, you know, people say, okay, why detail? Or de is it detail or details? Detail versus clarity. I mean, they seem to do the same thing. Well, no, they don't. So I thought what I would do is I would create a duplicate layer. I'm going to go in here and go to Topaz. Where are we? It's detail, not details. Good. Details three. Okay. This takes a little while because that's ah, pretty good because I made smaller JPEGs on purpose. Let me make that bigger. Even though it's cropped a little bit, we'll make it a little bigger so you can see what's going on here. So we're going to do a comparison between Detail 3 and Clarity. So if you have a scene like this uh, where there is a fair amount of detail, once again, what Detail 3 does similarly to, um, or it's similar to, uh, clarity in the respect that it's not just a one slider. Over here, notice we have, I'm in the top right, we have the ability to affect all of the tonalities, just the shadows, or just the highlights, or again, all of them. In this case, we'll do all of them. We have the ability to adjust the level of detail that we want to bring out in our image based on the size of those uh, t details. And so you have small details, medium details, and large details. I wish I could give you a better understanding of what makes one bigger or smaller. You'll just have to figure that out. But I know from experience that all of this paper, though, if there's any detail at all, it's going to be a fine detail. It's going to be small. So I can pull this over and notice, all, hopefully you can see that. Notice, here's the original. It's really affecting all over, it's overdone, right? I want, to, I want it to be that way so you can see it. But it's affecting that. And I'm going to bring that back, roughly, and I'm going to bring the medium details up. Notice it's not near as noticeable. If that's the original. That, that looks more like the clarity that's going on within the clarity tool, in my mind. It's, but it's not, but that's close. Okay, and then let's bring that down just to show you what's going on here. And then here's the large details. And the large details before, after. So you have a ton of control over the details, which is very different than clarity. And you'll notice that clarity is more of a soft, what's the word I want to use? It, it, like clarity in Lightroom, clarity in, in um, topaz, it is local contrast, but it's really more of an artfully applied contrast, whereas detail, you can make it look in your face pretty quickly, and in this case, I would probably use a little bit of medium and small and a, a little bit more of the large, and so we would get something that looked like this. So it's really bringing out the detail on these old tags, which when you're there in person, it's there. It's, it's been sitting there from, since 1957, and it's got all this dust, and it should have all those details on there. Um, and then I won't spend a lot of time because we're going to run out of time, but you, know, you can adjust the exposure if you want to, the contrast, the highlights, and just it's worth taking a minute. This is unique to this piece of software, but down here it says red cyan, magenta green, blue, yellow. These are not affecting the blue and the yellow, magenta green, or red and cyan. They are affecting what I would say is the luminosity value. Because look, if I pull this, see it gets darker in some of those tones or lighter on that spectrum of the cyan and red, right? They're opposites. Um, so it's actually a pretty cool tool. It's a more refined tool that we have with a huge saturation luminosity tool and some of the other products, but here, this is how you're doing the same thing and adjusting those tones. Really worth taking just 30 seconds that I did to show that those are there because some of you creative folks will have an aha moment with that and realize that's kind of cool. I can be playing with that stuff there. But net effect is, and you do have a mask, so you can remove it where you want to, but I really wanted to, to, to show you the difference between this and clarity by pointing out, you know, here's, here's what the look is, and I can really bring out the detail and think about detail as a piece of software, that that's exactly what you're doing is bringing out a lot of detail. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off, create another layer, and now let's go out to clarity. 
and then we'll finish up here and take some questions. All right, let's make this a little bigger again. So here we are back to our friend Clarity. I'll hit reset. So it goes back to zero. Remember, it's worth repeating. The, uh, the sliders are always sticky in most of all of the programs for Topaz, so they will remember where you last were. It's really convenient. We're working on a series of images, and you just want to go back and apply the same thing. You can make presets if you want to, like I have. So if you're working on a batch of things, you can apply that preset and so forth. Well, in this case, let's see what John Start looks like. Uh, really nice. Awesome. I love it. So there's before, there's after. It's a much more subtle look. It's still bringing out some of the detail on these tags, but it's not near as aggressive. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. This is a much more subtle use of local contrast, and it's a lot more artfully, I think is a good way to say that, applied versus the other. And in this case, that's pretty much all I do, although I will go back and check my history. And look, I'm glad I did. It's blocked up on the left side with some of the move we've done there. So just a refresher, I'm going to come down to the tone area here below my clarity sliders, and it's blocked up on the left side, so I'm going to pull my black slider to the right and pull it away from that left side. Uh, there we go. That looks a lot better. Now, now it's not so blocked up. I can see into these shadow areas between the old cards here, or tags, I guess you call them. Well, the right side looks pretty good. I'm fine, so let's go ahead and hit OK. And let's see what we got here. So there is the original, and there's clarity. There's the original, there's detail. It's a lot more aggressive. And I didn't have the ability to recover some of those dark tones. Look, that histogram is pretty blocked up on the left. So that's a real advantage. So let's turn it off again. So there is the original, there's clarity. You wouldn't even know I used a piece of software to do it. That's a good thing. Here's detail. And for those of you out there who really want to accentuate the details in something, this is why you would bring up uh, Topaz Detail, because that's its job, is to bring out all the detail, and its ability to do it on three different levels makes it all that more robust and a little more powerful. So there are already at 546, and I know we want to take a, a few questions, and I'm happy to leave some images open here that we can go back to and play with. As far as questions, I just want to let you know, when you said, uh, do people, um, uh -oh. people are getting bored with me, we got flooded with a ton of answers, John. And oh, what did all, they say? They all love you. They are all oh, yeah. really excited. Yeah. So, you say uh, that to all of your presenters. <laughs> yeah. but thank you. I appreciate it. I, I'll, I'll try to be gracious. We have, I um, if you'd like to follow John, you can visit his website at barclayphoto.com. You can also follow him on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash John Barclay Photo, Instagram at John Barclay Photo, and Twitter at JH Barclay. Uh, if you have any additional questions that we weren't able to get to, you can message us at webinars at topazlabs.com. And if you'd like to sign up for upcoming webinars, you can register right. for those at topazlabs.com forward slash webinars. And do please follow. The Instagram thing is a blast, and I just topped 500. Let's get it up to 600 followers. That would be a blast. Uh, and spread the word if you like what I'm doing. And I do do workshops and tours, so go look at those as well. And love to meet some of these folks that are following along on the webinars it would be great awesome thank you everybody for coming john thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to educate about 700 people at once that was a lot of fun um, it's, a, it's a blast thank you so much yeah and everybody thank you for coming and uh, good afternoon good evening or good morning good morning yeah <laughs> good take care folks bye-bye